Hey everybody, it's Laura Click with Blue Kite Marketing, and I am so excited to have Jeff Goins here today um, from GoinsWriter.com, and he has two brand new ebooks out that are fantastic, and we're going to talk a little bit about blogging. Um, he has built a very successful blog, and want to talk to him a little bit about that and why blogging is um, such a great platform for you, whether you are a writer like Jeff is, or if you are a business owner, entrepreneur, or whatever you may be, blogging is really great for that. So um, we'll just dive right in. So Jeff, welcome, and thanks for thanks for chatting with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Laura. So I mentioned your blog. It's received some awards lately, so congratulations on that. Um, you've been on Copy Blogger, Pro Blogger, and you've been everywhere under the sun. Um, and, you know, I think when people achieve success, it's like, this has happened overnight, but you, you and I both know that it's not overnight. You've been working at this for a little while. Um, but your blog is still relatively new, right? How, how, how old is your blog? Right. Well, it's about to uh, pass the one-year mark. Um, it's, uh, I, I mean, I've had the domain for a couple of years now, and it used to be like a portfolio site mm -hmm. for my, my freelance writing that I would do. But I've been serious about the blog for about a year since, you know, February 1st of 2011. That's awesome. So, um, I guess, what did you, this is your, this isn't your first blog, right? This isn't your first radio. Right. Yeah. So I've been blogging, uh, for, you know, over six years. I had a Zanga blog back in the day. I think that's how I got started. I've had a, you know, blogger blog. I've had uh, numerous blogs, um, but I was, you know, I was blogging pretty regularly on a blog for about four or five years, and I had just plateaued and I had lost passion for what I was writing about, and so I just decided to start over with this blog last year. And uh, I mean, it was, it was the best thing that I ever could have done, and I didn't expect uh, things to grow so quickly. Um, but it's been it's been a lot of fun, and I think you know those previous five years of trying out a bunch of different things before launching this new platform was kind of a way of practicing. Sure. So why do you think that in a year's time, I mean, you've been able to kind of you know really um, you know go from zero to sixty in a in a short amount of time? I mean, how what do you what did you learn from your previous you know years of blogging experience that helped you make this one be successful? And what do you think? Um, I mean, what was the special special sauce, so to speak? What was it that, that made it successful this time around? Yeah, well, you know, um, I, I don't know what, uh, you know, what other trials and struggles people face when they're trying to grow their platform. Uh, but for me, you know, as a writer, I kind of thought that I knew what was up. Like, I, I thought I knew what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. And so for, you know, about five years, I was really stubborn and... I, I basically neglected a lot of conventional wisdom that, you know, you can read on any blogging site, you know, guest posts, build relationships, connect with other bloggers, uh, be resourceful, help people, uh, you know, write headlines that are engaging and interesting. Um, you know, and I just really, I just felt, you know, er some arrogantly and, and ignorantly, I thought I'm, I'm too good for that. And so, uh, really what it was, was my realizing I didn't know everything. I didn't know as much as I thought I did. And as a writer, I began to respect blogging as its own craft, mm -hmm. as a very unique way of communicating. So just because you're a writer or, uh, you know, whatever your craft is, uh, bring, when you bring it online, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're bringing your business online, uh, it changes things. Mm -hmm. And that was an important revelation for me that, you know, this new medium deserved, uh, some respect. And mm -hmm. so I, I just became a student of blogging and understanding how, you know, web marketing works and how people communicate online and what is really going to catch people's attention. So, I mean, I, I think that the things that I did was, you know, probably what you could guess I, I guess posted on a, a lot of blogs I built real life relationships with people that translated to um, online relationships so instead of you know just trying to email and connect with people on Twitter and Facebook I tried to you know meet people over coffee and then I saw how a real life engagement with somebody um, made for a deeper connection mm -hmm. online yeah. and I was able to really 
build some advocates and friends and, and even what, you know, I consider business partners. Um, and I just tried to help people, you know, so I didn't take for granted that people had to listen to what I had to say, uh, which I, you know, did. And I think a lot of writers do and anybody who feels like they have some sort of expertise in something, uh, it's, it's tempting to think people just need to listen to me. Yeah. And I realized that I was competing with a lot of voices. And so the best way for me to, you know, make some sort of impact was to try to be really resourceful and help people. And so I just would find, uh, I would ask questions and I would find out what questions people were asking. And then I would try to find the answers to their struggles. So, you know, you had the benefit, you know, this time around of, you know, you had five, six years of blogging experience behind you. Um, you know, let's say there's someone watching this that has never blogged before and they want to give that a go. What, what advice would you give to them getting started? Well, uh, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think probably the, the best thing you can do is actually start. Uh, a lot of people I talk to, most people uh, that I have a conversation with now, I mean, blogging has become the normative thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, five or six years ago when I got involved in it, like it was still a really geeky, weird thing to do. <laughs> and, and I mean, like, there, you know, to a certain extent, that's I was going to say, it's still probably true just a little. <laughs> it's still the stigma, but I don't know about you, but I have lots of conversations with people and they're sort of like guilty. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I've thought about doing that, or I've got a blog, and I haven't updated it in months or years. Right. Uh, so, you know, really, I think ultimately blogging is about perseverance. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you start wherever you start, and you get better. Right. Um, but this is one of those things where uh, if you stick with it, you essentially, you know, you can outlast and outwork those who um, – uh, aren't really dedicated or committed. And right. so I, I'm, you know, I don't believe in, in overnight success. I mean, any semblance of success I've seen has been the result of about six years of work. Right. Um, and, uh, and it just kind of all came to fruition this go around because it was a fresh start and I was really excited and, and really dug in and, and did the work. But I think, you know, the best thing you can do is just begin and mm -hmm. actually understand what you're, committing to it right. and um, you know it's good to write about something that you're passionate about because uh, if you're just kind of chasing dollars or success or whatever you know it, it only takes a few weeks for that to get kind of old um, and I, I, I believe that passion you know whatever you're doing you need to be passionate about it and if you're passionate about it people notice that and, it, and you're going to be able to create your best work and then, you know, if you want to monetize that or do whatever you want with it, there's totally opportunities to, um, to do that. And I've, you know, I've, I've started doing that and seen a lot of fruit. But the fun thing is I didn't do that for the money. I did it for the passion about the topic. And I think that's the cool thing about the web now is you can take anything that you're interested in, talk about it, find some niche that uh, is like that's their thing, and then find ways to help people. And people are willing to you know, pay money for you to solve their problems. Right. You know, it's interesting, you know, you talk about passion. I think there are some people who have this glamorized view of like, you know, my, uh, I'm a, uh, postage stamp collector and I'm really passionate about that. Or I'm, a, you know, a, I, I don't know, can't think of anything else, but you know, a, a tree frog, you know, watcher, I don't know, something random like that. And maybe that's their thing. Um, I mean, I think finding a passion is all well and good. I think there's, but there's two genres of bloggers. There are, there are, you know, you can be very passionate and be broke. You know, you can, yeah. you know, blog about these things sure. and make not a single dime. So, um, you know, how do you, um, deal with the passion bloggers? And I don't know if you can hear this, but my dog is outside the door. So, um, Bailey is, is trying to, to interrupt <laughs> the interview. She's so excited about what's going on in here. She's like, please let me in. Um, anyway, so, you know, what would you say to those, those passion bloggers? I mean, I think, you know, do you get what I'm trying to say? I think that, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's sure. the passion bloggers and, you know, you said you don't want to be out in it for, you know, making a buck, but let's be honest, a blog is a powerful platform in which to, 
Um, you know, if you are if you are a business owner, um, it can be a really powerful thing in terms of building building your business. So, talk about the, I guess talk about the difference between those two and what how do you merge the passion and the business aspect of it? Yeah, totally. Um, well, you know, let me back up and, and say that uh, I'm finding that this is a, a common uh, thing with you know the blogosphere and, and the internet is we chase uh, numbers, whatever they might be, you know, so statistics, visitors, uh, monetary success, whatever it is, we build these things uh, because we're excited about it. But then it turns into something else that we're just not passionate about anymore. And I talk to lots of people who build platforms, build blogs, businesses, whatever, and they feel stuck in them. And they've got thousands of people showing up and listening to what they have to say, and they resent it. Mm-hmm. Like they are not passionate about what they're doing anymore. And they might be making, you know, good money, but it doesn't matter. Like they're just, they're bored or they're dissatisfied or they just don't feel like they're being true to themselves anymore. And I was in a place like that where I had a, you know, not super successful blog, but I've been doing it for like five years and I felt like I just got to stick with it. You know, mm-hmm. I just got to keep doing it and tough right. it out. But I was not passionate about what I was writing about anymore. And so, you know, for those types of people, I, if you're not doing what you're passionate about, regardless of the results, uh, you need to quit. You know, you Mm -hmm. need to start over and you need to do something that you love. Because the truth is that when you love what you do, uh, you do your best work. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a, an idealist, like I'm pretty pragmatic. And so that lasts about two weeks. <laughs> and then, you know, then it's just the hard. sheen wears off. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but you know, like you know, when you're doing the wrong thing, like you know, when it's time to quit your job or move right. on to a new career, or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um. So you know, I, I think that's important. Do what you love, and then find ways to uh, monetize it. So that, I mean, the second part of that is I don't believe that bloggers should go broke and. I speak to a tribe of people who are used to being broke. Yeah. Busters, right. You know? the, and, whole, the whole concept of a starving artist, you know? Right? Yeah, yeah, it's really romantic. And, like, I'm, I, I think that's ridiculous. I think bare minimum, you know, if you've got a self-hosted blog or, you know, subscribe to some sort of uh, newsletter software, there are things that you use for your platform that cost money. Those things should be paying for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's no reason why you should be spending a hundred bucks a month or, you know, a year on, on something that isn't earning you money where you're investing your time. You should be getting paid for that. And maybe it's not six figures, but that this thing should at least pay for itself. It shouldn't steal from you and your family and your livelihood. So I'm really passionate about that. Um, uh, you know, so I, I'm always talking to writers about like, you know, if you just did this, if you just took these five blog posts and turned them into a little ebook and sold them for a dollar, you could probably make more money than you realize. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of a, a walking experiment in that. Uh, even these these new ebooks is, was just um, it was an experiment. I thought, gosh, I'm really passionate about this topic about how you could build a platform that allows you to speak with authority to uh, your audience. Uh, but I didn't know if people would you know, pay money for it, and, and they certainly have. And so that's been really um, exciting. But um, you know, I, I think that blogging in a lot of ways is just uh, experimenting with what works. You know? So really the audience controls what you can do with your blog. I mean, you're, you're the, the passionate leader who's kind of leading the discussion and asking the questions or kind of bringing the challenges. But ultimately, uh, it depends on the audience whether or not, uh, you know, kind of what direction you go in. And so I'm always trying to be sensitive to how people are responding to things and asking questions, kind of floating out ideas to my list. And, you know, and I've got some intuition, but I'm also really sensitive to what people are doing. And, uh, you know, I would say treat it as an experiment. Have fun with it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, realize that people tend to value things that cost money more than those that do not. Mm -hmm. And so if you have something really valuable that you want to share, you might actually owe it to your audience to charge for it Mm -hmm. uh, so that they actually open that document and read it, you know, or or actually 
use that piece of software, or, you know, whatever it is you're trying to sell. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been studying a lot of this stuff and receiving a lot of interesting teaching and, and coaching. I, I was really reluctant to sell something on my blog, um, but it, it sold and it was fun and, you know, I've got bills to pay. And so, um, it's, it's nice to have, you know, extra money, just sharing something that I'm excited about. I think that's the rub is when you do something that you love and then you find a way to charge money for it, you don't have to feel bad about it, mm-hmm. you know, like, cause you're not, it's not some weird bait and switch. You're not compromising your values. And when you spend 20 hours building something like a course or an ebook or whatever, um, you know, like a few hours into that, you go, okay, I'm glad I'm charging for this. Right, right. I'm, put, I'm putting some serious time into it. And Your time is valuable. Like if I, I wouldn't go into work and work, you know, on this project for 20 hours and go, oh, you don't have to pay me for that. I just, I, that was a passion project. Right. Uh, certainly there are things that we do because we love them, but it's not a crime to, you know, receive money uh, for it. And one of the things that I was challenged to do and I turn and challenge other people to do is don't wait too long to try to sell something on your blog. Uh, it can be something as small as, um, you know, a, a $5 ebook or, you know, listing your consulting services. Right. And everybody that I've talked to, you know, big time entrepreneurs who make their whole living uh, on the web uh, have told me the same thing. If, if you wait too long, one, the audience, you know, it's kind of jarring. You know, you've been talking to us for two and a half years and all of a sudden you want to sell something. That's weird. You've been giving this information to us for free this long. Why? Why do we have to pay for it now? Um, and like, I think you kind of uh, you, you get resistant to. It. I mean, if you don't do something, you know, for a long time, and then all of a sudden decide, well, I'm going to start charging for this. I, I think there's a there's a lot of internal resistance and reluctance to doing that. But now that I've done that, I go, wow, people are willing to do that, and they don't feel like I'm robbing them. Right. And and I don't feel like I'm robbing them. Uh, okay, I'm ready ready to do this again and make some more money. Sure. Well, what's interesting is you know you're talking to an audience like you said who's used to being the starving artist, who's used to going right. broke, who you know writers do it because they love it. Um, you know the people that are watching this video or you read my blog are people who often have a business already in place, and they're saying I'm looking at getting online, using social media, using a blog, maybe building a platform to build the business that they already have. And so I think you're looking at, you're talking to people who are used to not, they're not used to selling where I think my people are used to selling, but not, not, but they don't know how to sell on the web, which is a very different thing. So, um, I think you have a tendency, you know, that, that salesmanship attitude, um, is important, but yet it's different when you translate it from the offline world to the online world. Um, and I could go on about that, but t- tell me your thoughts on that. I mean, in terms of, you know, I think you do have to sell, but I think the, the, the nuance there is you also can't oversell. And so for people who are just coming into the online world for the first time, I think sometimes um, that can be a challenge. I, I think that's that's well put, and, and I think you're right. Um, I take for granted because with with the people that I talk to, there's so much reluctance. So that by the time it you know you're ready to sell, like you're ready. I mean, you are overdue. And I literally had people months ago emailing me saying, "Okay, enough with the free stuff. When can we pay you for something?" Right. And at that point, I was like, "Okay." <laughs> I, I guess it's okay. Like, I, I guess it, it would be okay to sell a product. Right. Um, but, you know, I've seen, um, I, I think we've all seen examples of people who jump into social media, you know, with a cause or uh, career aspirations or, or whatever it is, and they are just gung-ho, salesy about it. Right. And nothing turns people off faster than that attitude, which is just too, you know, too much too quickly. And, um, you know, I, I, I read a book, uh, recently about entrepreneurship and why, you know, it's, it's a bad idea to start a business and then have to li- immediately live off of that business because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't take time to mature and grow into the thing that it needs to be before you start pulling a paycheck from it. And I think mm-hmm. the same thing's true with an online platform. Mm-hmm. So if from day one, so, you know, on one hand you can, 
wait too long to sell something. On the other hand, you can you can try selling too early. Right. You know, day one you launch your blog, you're selling something. Depending on what you're doing, that could be a real a real bad thing because most blogs start out at zero, and you've got to earn permission and trust, and that takes time. And as you earn permission and trust, then you can create things that help the community. And I love um, the model of like a, a website like Copy Blogger, where you know Brian Clark just started talking about a topic, copywriting. And then he found out, and then he found that there was a whole niche. I mean, he essentially created a market that uh, centered around this topic. And then he found out what the community wanted, and then he created custom products for that community. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it's it's a new world, and you know, um, entrepreneurs can really do well to kind of take notice of the uh, of this you know these new media and use them. Well, or you can try to, you know, come in with your agenda and and just try to sell your widget. Mm -hmm. But I think those who are doing really well are those who are creating conversations, uh, paying attention to what people want, and then creating products or services or whatever that are customized to meet those needs. And that's that's a really exciting thing. I mean, think about uh, kind of, you know, old school business methods. You essentially had to create something, you test marketed it in a very small sample size, and and you just hoped that it would sell. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do that anymore. Right. I, I had a thousand people contacting me last month telling me what they wanted me to create for them and what price they were willing to pay for it. So I'm like, okay, like I'll just create this and I know those people will buy that, no problem. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, a great book would be uh, Permission Marketing by Seth Godin. Mm-hmm. You have to earn permission. You can't just be tweeting every hour, come buy my thing, or every blog post is a, is a sales pitch. I think that very quickly turns people off. And I think those of us who are in this space who really help spread a lot of those messages, um, that turns us off. And so, I mean, you're really going to isolate yourself, not only from the customer, but also from any friends or advocates who could help you succeed. Right, right. There's a reason why we fast forward through all the advertising on TV. I mean, the same is true. I think we've developed this kind of la, 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 don't sell at me, don't sell at me. And so, yeah, it's, I think that's where the big struggle is, you know, for, you know, people who have a established business in place, they are jumping online into social with something to sell. Um, but I think you have to figure out what the balance is there between conversation and selling. You know, you can't make money just by having a conversation. But like you said, if you come out, out of the gate selling, I think that's um, going to be a huge turnoff too. So um, one of the things you mentioned that was interesting about um, – uh, surveying your your audience about what what they wanted to hear from you and and so that's certainly a really easy thing but what about the person who has zero email subscribers and they're starting on on day one how do you get that information about what people want to hear from you how, how would you go about that for someone who's starting today yeah well I mean that's hard like that's the hardest place to right. start and it's so easy once you have momentum to say it's just easy just do what I what I'm doing <laughs> uh, but I know what it's like to be in that place where you're just beginning and, and all these experts are saying well just do this put an email widget you know in the upper right hand <laughs> corner of your blog and people will sign up and it that's true eventually you know but you still have to uh, get in front of people and interrupt them like you have to do that initial interruption and you have to do it in like the least disruptive way possible, but you have to do it. Like you have to find a way to get in front of people to earn their permission. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's a good way to do that and there's a really bad way to do that. And the really bad way to do it is like anybody who's been to, to the mall or the airport in the past five years has probably experienced it. Somebody asks you a question like, uh, hey, what, what do you do for – uh, you know, cosmetics, or hey, would you like a would you like a free trip to uh, Orlando? Um, there are these people that are accosting you. That they're they're trying to bait you into buying a credit card or trying out this product or whatever, and you know it. Like you know it's a bait. Like you mm-hmm. know that they are sucking you into selling you something. Right. So the way that you dismantle uh, people's um, uh, guardedness about advertising 
and, and selling something is you have to give away something for free. Mm-hmm. You have to uh, be generous, and, and there has to be no bait and switch at all. So here's something for free, and I am I am buying your attention. I am earning right. your permission. And so, I mean, practically, what does that look like? You know, if you have a blog or, you know, some sort of asset by which you're going to communicate and hopefully earn subscribers uh, or, you know, people that are going to give you permission essentially to communicate with them, uh, you have to start talking about something, you mm-hmm. know. Hopefully it's, it's something that you're passionate about. And it can be a really focused topic like tree frogs uh, <laughs> or it can be just an idea like a worldview. And, and ideally it's probably a mix of both because uh, people don't just care in the long term. They don't just care about what you're talking about. They care about how you're talking about right. it. They care about you. They want your opinion, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. eventually. But initially, how you attract them is, you know, you talk about something that that matters to them: writing, photography, uh, you know, business, whatever it is. But I think it's important, especially since blogging is becoming such a big thing, and blogging for a particular industry is becoming really big. I think it's important that you blog for your customers, mm-hmm. not for your peers. Yes. That's a real, that, and that's a real difficult thing for people. I think, especially um, in our space, you know, for people yeah, who do what right. we do, I think um, it's real easy. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love reading stuff that my peers do, and I love when they come and read read the stuff that I do. I mean, I think Absolutely. I think that peer um, um, readership is really good because it helps um, in a lot of ways. Um, it gives you can, some credibility. You learn new ideas yourself. But you're right that who you're who you're writing to has got to be um, who your your people or your as Seth Godin would say your tribe or your audience or customers. You have to know um, who that is and and uh, you, you know your peers. I would say most of the time it's not. It's, sometimes it is. I mean, there's some blogs that are geared for that, you know. Um, but but a lot of times that's not that's not the case. Um, Speaking of peers, you've done a lot of guest posting. Um, why? I mean, I, I mean, I know the answer to this, but you know, but talk to me about guest posting and why that is such a powerful tool. I, I guess we know it's a powerful tool. So tell me why. You know how um, how you've gone about it and how that's helped launch how how that's helped launch your blog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I hate networking. You know, I'm, you know. Uh, I've, I've been at, uh, uh, we have been at, at events together and I'm, uh, shy and I don't, I don't go up to people, you know, very much. And, uh, I don't like doing that sort of thing. Um, it feels kind of sleazy to it, me. And yeah. no, it's not, but yeah. it, it feels that way. Right. Uh, so like guest posting is essentially networking online for a blogger. Um, and so how I've done that is, I've been really careful to, I've tried to not come off as, you know, the guy who's always trying to push his agenda. And so, um, one of the things that I do is I try to connect with influential, influential bloggers or, you know, leaders of some sort by, by interviewing them. Mm -hmm. And I found out years ago when I, uh, worked for uh, an online magazine and started, a you know, this, this online community, uh, I found out that. If you say you're a writer and you write for a blog or anything that sounds like a reputable uh, publication, you get all kinds of free stuff. <laughs> like I've come into events and all kinds of things because I said I'm I'm a I'm a blogger and I've got this blog and it's got this many readers. Um, like that's your that's the new press pass, right? You know, that that you that's basically the 21st century definition of a journalist. So uh, the same thing's true with. Asking to like you know the actual interview subjects, asking to interview somebody. So um, in the past year, you know, I've, I've gotten uh, to connect with some really great uh, influential people online by interviewing them, and uh, a lot of that has led to um, guest posts on sites that say no, we don't accept guest posts. Um, so I've really come to appreciate the value of, of building online relationships. Mm-hmm. So, as it pertains to you know guest posting, I've taken that same sort of approach where um, you know I just I just email people. I, I find blogs that are uh, you know are interesting. You know, talking about certain things that that um, I'm interested in or, or reaching an audience that I would love to connect with. And I don't I don't think of anything off limits anymore because I've had you know all kinds of big deal people respond to totally random emails. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I found that you know. That's the new 
level of accessibility for the you know modern business leader is mm-hmm. um, you can email just about anybody mm-hmm. and, and you'll get a response. And you know, different people are, are different, um, but uh, I, I've been surprised more often than not who will actually respond. So you know, um, with guest posting, I just started where I knew I could get some posts. I started with friends. And I started small and, you know, and relationally and just kind of built from there. And I think that's a great strategy because when people, especially big time, you know, platforms and anybody that's reaching a a lot of people, they don't always have time to, um, you know, look at all of the submissions. Right. And so it's not just based on the quality of content. It's also kind of based on how legitimate they perceive right, you. Right, right, right. they got to bet you in some way, you know? That's their credibility on the line. Right. So so if you're kind of, you know, if, if you're blogging for your friend and you know your friend has a connection with, you know, so-and-so who's kind of like the next level or whatever, um, you know, you just kind of start to take intentional steps and you create this portfolio and you point back to it. Like on, on your site, Laura, you've done a good job of, you know, listing the, the sites that you've, blogged on, you know, as seen on these, you know, these sites. And so when somebody gets um, some sort of submission from you, a lot of times they're going to go check out your website. Right. Uh, Especially if you send them a link, which you should do, you know, here's some places that I've guest posted, would love to guest post on your site. Right. And I, you know, I'm starting to get all kinds of uh, requests for guest posts. I don't have a secretary or anything. I'm the one vetting those. And there's so many. And if, you know, I look at two things, one, the quality of content and two, um, you know, what have they done before? And so, uh, you know, it's not right, but if I've seen that they've guest posted on pretty big sites or sites that I've guest posted on, um, I go, oh, okay, well, you know, th- th- then it's probably worth my opening up their, you know, word attachment and right. saying what they've, what they've written. Right. So I think you just start small and build and never believe that anything's off limits and always be looking for opportunities to make that relational connection and a great way to do that is um, email. And uh, uh, I have a friend, uh, James Clear, who has a website called Passive Panda, which is all about passive income. And he's got a great little email course about how to email important people. And it's really simple, uh, but really good. And you know, basically, the point is uh, keep it short, keep it personal, um, introduce yourself, and add value. And if you do that with uh, influential people, um, some of them are going to reciprocate. Right. Absolutely. Well, it, it, I think I remember you writing at one point about, about that. You have to ask, you know, people want to know, how do you get these things? Well, you have to ask just like anything in life. So, um, you know, you might, you might get told no, or you might get ignored, but you don't know that until you, till you ask. And I'm with you. I think, um, most times if you, if you, um, if you ask, and then I think it, it boils down to having a good pitch. You have to have a good idea and, you know, have researched your, uh, you know, your person that you're, you're talking to and you know who their audience is. I mean, I think all of those things are important too. Um, before I let you go, let's talk just real quickly about your two eBooks, um, before your first book and every writer's dream. And I think, you know, they're really, they really are geared towards, um, writers and someone who wants to write a book, which, by the way, congratulations. I know you've got a book coming out. When is your book coming out? In the fall sometime. Okay. Have you announced the title yet? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a nonfiction uh, book called uh, Wrecked When a Painful World Turns Into Your Comfortable Life. And it's about um, uh, you know my uh, experiences um, overseas. And you know I've done uh, some... You know, humanitarian work and mission work and, uh, uh, you know, worked with the homeless community in Nashville. And so it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's a different type of, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, um, coming out in, uh, uh, this fall. We haven't, we don't know what, what month exactly, August, September or October. Excellent. Well, awesome. Well, um, congratulations on that. Um, it's very exciting. Um, so I know your two eBooks are kind of geared towards people who want to write a book. Um, but yet, as we've talked about, I mean, the, the, I think the tips that you've provided in them are, they go beyond writers and beyond people who, um, want to write a book. Really, it's about building a platform. So yeah. uh, give us just a little quick overview as to what, what the eBooks are about and who should go out and buy them. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, I mean, 
It's over a hundred pages of content, uh, super scannable. I am not somebody who will read a, an ebook on my computer if it's, you know, like a 12 point font. Right. These things are, I think really, I, I've written them for ADD people like myself who are, you know, got email open and five browser windows open. Uh, so <laughs> Me I, too. Know, hopefully, <laughs> It out is, is compelling and, and interesting and, and allows you to kind of take the nuggets that are applicable to you. But yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. You know, the, they kind of go together. Every writer's dream, the, the subtitle uh, for that is how to never pitch your writing again. And, and the idea there is, um, you know, most people don't like selling themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I was talking to a friend who runs a branding agency the other day, and I was talking about how writers hate to pitch themselves. And she goes, everybody hates that. Right. You know, she, she helps people build their businesses and build their brands. And she said, everybody from a photographer to a, a you know, plumber just wants to do the work. Like they just right. want to do what they do and they want people to think they're awesome. Just come them. like the whole build it and they will come mentality. Right. You know, I've got right. my shingle out, come buy my stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, and a platform is that, essentially. It's a marketing platform. So if you do the work, if you do the hard work of building relationships, uh, building a brand, uh, connecting with people who can help uh, spread your message, eventually you don't have to go knock on, knock on doors. People come to you, you know? And, and this is true for every successful business, author, whatever. Eventually you build something so compelling and so interesting that uh, – People come to you more often than you have to go to them and try to sell something because you've established a brand that you've created in a you know a really compelling reputation for doing excellent work. So every writer's dream is basically about the three tools that you need in order to make that happen. Uh, one is a platform. A great example of that is a blog. But you know any platform is just like a what uh, Seth Godin would call a permission asset. It's something that allows you to communicate. And again, you know, I think giving away stuff for free, you know, helpful advice or, you know, whatever it is, giving something away in exchange for permission to communicate with people, you know, whether it be through a blog, email, whatever, um, that's really valuable. So you you create that platform and you start uh, building it through generosity. And then uh, the second tool is a brand, you know, so whether it's a company or just you, the person. Uh, people need to know what to expect from you. You have to be consistent in terms of how you communicate. So that includes everything from, you know, copy on your website to what you look like or, you know, the type, you know, the, your, your Twitter avatar, the, you know, your picture on your website. Like if people are, are having trouble recognizing you in person from your you know, online picture, that's a problem. Don't use one from 20 years ago. So. <laughs> like don't use one that makes you look better or worse than you actually right, look. Right, you know, right, right. Use one where it's like darkly lit and you look atrocious. But don't <laughs> something that makes you like, like that's, you know, super uh, not real looking. <laughs> right, right, uh, right. I've met people, uh, and I'm sure you have too, I've met people in person where I go, you don't look like you look on Twitter. Yeah, but yeah. That's the point. This, like, social media is social, and so you're trying to connect with people. And ideally, eventually, offline or in some way that builds the relationship and so being really consistent with how you talk and how you represent yourself uh, is important because then people can come to know what to expect from you right um and and then the third thing is um what i call channels of connection so that's marketing it's communication it's networking it's it's uh, relationships it's just connecting with people in a uh, real personal way um, through whatever media works for um, for you, and uh, you know you've got all kinds of free resources like Facebook and Twitter and blogs and Google Plus and all of these different networks that if you uh, allow you know really understand that these are just people, um, you've got a, a tremendous opportunity to connect with people, help them, and ultimately you know build your business or whatever it is you're trying to create. So uh, that just kind of talks about the nuts and bolts of how to do that. And then the other uh, ebook before your first book is just five practical steps for how to get published in a magazine or on a website. So it's all the pitching stuff. So the hard work of how do I do this, you know, while I'm building my platform, how do I get guest posts? How do I get in front of people, knock on doors, 
do that in a non sleazy way where um, people are actually going to respond and I'm going to really kind of get my brand out there for people to know. Yeah. Well, um, I will put some links. So right below this video on the blog, we'll have some links. And so you can, um, buy those. It reminds me of the price point They're So the value is so unreal. So this is a lot of great info for a really good price, but remind me of the price point. Yeah. Well, it's, it's four ninety nine for, for both of the eBooks. And, right. uh, and you've got over a hundred pages of, of content between the, uh, we've well, got over almost 150 pages of content between the two eBooks. Um, so lots of good stuff, very scannable. I've intentionally priced it low. I, I think it's worth more than that, but I want people to have these resources. I think they're, um, important and helpful and, uh, and I hope they help as many people as possible. Absolutely. Well, they're great. We'll put links to them. Hope people check them out. And then, um, also have a link to your blog, which is goingswriter.com. If you're not a reader, you need to get over there and read good stuff. Um, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll end it there. Um, so I, I encourage people to give those, those ebooks a, a look. Even if you're not a writer, I think it's a good primer for building, um, building a platform and, and getting comfortable in the online space. So I think whether you're a business owner or an aspiring writer or, or whatnot, I think there's there's value there so thank you so much for for chatting jeff this has been a lot of fun and hopefully folks have learned a lot from your um from your success and and what you've been able to do in the last year so congratulations for all that you've got going yeah thanks laura it's uh it's been fun and thanks for having me absolutely